Hi, I'm Jordan. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm a stay-at-home mom of two kiddos, a four-year-old and a one-year-old, and we are a homeschool family. Before I get into today's video, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos. Today, I am going to be talking to you about our July monthly homeschool update. Whew, where to start? Where to begin? Um, as some of you know, if you've been watching other videos um, from us, we have just started kind of homeschooling this year with our oldest, my son, who's four. Um, we did some preschool at home and we kind of flew through that. And so now we are at the point where we decided to start kindergarten in March. I know that that's not a traditional time to start homeschooling for a year, but we figured it would be a perfect opportunity to give us a couple of extra months to do what we want to do. And um, we are going to be year round homeschoolers anyway. So we just thought, um, let's not let the calendar slow us down. We want to go at his pace. And that means starting in March. So that's what we did. When we started, we had several different curriculums that we've picked. And some things we've kept, some things have changed. So I'm just gonna kind of update you on where we are at. So when it comes to math, we uh, jumped right in with Matthew C in the primer level. And that is still going amazing. We are loving it. Like I said, we started in March. We are now at the end of July and we have completed half of the program already. So it's a 30 week program. Um, one lesson per week and it gives you one video and seven worksheets and you can do this however you'd like. I know some people don't use all of the sheets, some people um, do and they stretch things out longer. You know, it is whatever works for you with the comp with, um, it's whatever works for you in regards to the program. But for us, we um, have been just kind of trying to do a little bit of everything because I figure uh, the review is good for him and my son's only four, so I'm not trying to push him too fast or too hard in any direction. I just want to go at his at his pace. I did uh, go over, there's a brand new math curriculum that is out there from Core Knowledge. I'm going to go ahead and link that video below in the description, but uh, I am interested in maybe incorporating some math from that as just like a little way to maybe spice things up, but we are not steering away from Matthew C just because I have this philosophy, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, <laughs> right? Of course, if it is broke, do fix it, which is where we're gonna be now with reading. <laughs> so we, um, for preschool and then into kindergarten, we did all about reading the pre-reading program and we, loved it we did everything for it and then we got to level one and it just wasn't working for us and i have heard nothing but amazing things about this program so i have shelved it my hope is that we can come back to it but we are just we're just hitting like a a block and i didn't know is it me is it the program so then I went to Core Knowledge because it's free. I thought, let's try another approach. And there were things about Core Knowledge that really worked for us. So we tried Core Knowledge and we really liked um, some of the things about it. Some of the things worked really well for us and other things still started to fall stagnant. And in both cases, I kind of noticed it was the actual putting together of words. Um, and it just, so it was like the same skill can kind of presented in different ways and we were still struggling. So I was like, okay, so at this point it is either me, the way I'm doing things is not beneficial to my child or he isn't ready for it. So we've shelved that except for the handwriting piece because I can go into this in just a second, but there is handwriting as well. So we kept that. And so now, instead of doing some of these more formal phonics curriculums, we have um, started using Teacher Monster to Read, which has been successful in the last few days, but it really has only been a couple of days, guys, since we started this. So I don't wanna, you know, count my chickens before they hatch. 
but um, this is a program that is done by Usborn. If you want the app, the app is $5. I don't know if that's subscription, like $5 a month, $5 a one and done. I don't know because we went with the PC version. If you go to teachermonstertoread.com, it's free. So it's put on by Usborn. It's done by their, um, their charity foundation. The money from the app goes back in to the charity. If you don't choose to do the app, you can still access the program by accessing it through a computer and going to the website. So um, we just decided that would be what we did. And I was really excited because when I made the program, I also saw that there were other teacher monster things in that website that now he can do like, uh, I think there's one about like healthy eating habits and numbers and um, there might even be like an additional reading one after that. But anyway, we're starting at the beginning with this free computer game because it is, it's a computer game. And I think that that is helping a lot. It's a game, it doesn't feel um, like necessarily school and I'm not part of it. And so that way, I think, I think I'm hitting both things here, right? Like if it's me, I'm not involved with the game. So the pressure that mom might be putting on child is being removed. And if it's not me, if it's just that he's not ready, well, then that's okay too, because this is super low stakes, fun video game. And right now it's mostly just reviewing what we did before and really solidifying those skills, which maybe that's the problem. Maybe we went too fast through the pre-reading program and he actually needs to review those skills before we can move forward. Either way, we're still doing a ton of reading together. We're still doing handwriting. So he is getting review of the letters that way. We're getting review of letters in our bug unit. There's a lot of ways that we're working on letters, but as far as like reading and phonics of like sounding words out and CVC words and things, we're not really getting into all that yet, but we are using this computer game to kind of keep things fresh and, and keep things fun. So teach your monster to read, free online. If you are interested in me showing you more about that and doing a video on that, let me know in the comments below. I mentioned that we are using the handwriting piece. So just so you guys know, Core Knowledge is absolutely free online. And now they have it for all of the core subjects, which is phenomenal. Um, grades K through eight, though I will warn you for math, um, their middle school, units are not finished, but pretty much everything else is done and they keep adding and uh, expanding and it's just amazing and I absolutely love it. So we use Core Knowledge um, Language Arts for the handwriting piece. So in their language arts, their language arts units are kind of like their phonics, how to read, um, handwriting, like letter piece for grades, I believe K, through three, I think it's either, it's either K to, to two or K to three, I'm pretty sure it's K through three. And then they have domains for grades K through three, and that is more of a learning listening piece. And I'll explain to you what that is and how I went about handling that. So for that, their idea here is that there are topics that students should know about to have some background information because reading comprehension has a lot to do with understanding vocabulary, understanding the subject matter to begin with. And so building up a really good, strong foundation of uh, background knowledge is extremely important. So they have created what they call domains of information that is in a very digestible kind of narrative form to explain to kiddos um, and, and conversational in a lot of ways, some of these topics. Some of the topics, not all of them, because there's 12 that they have in kindergarten that they think is important is things like um, plants, your five senses, weather and seasons, kings and queens, and in kings and queens, they talk about traditional fairy tales like Snow White and Cinderella, 
fables. So like there's a big range of things that they're like, hey, a kindergartner needs to be exposed to these topics. Now what they did is they have these just like pictures that they are expecting you to either project on a board if you're in a classroom as a teacher, or you can get little flip books for the kids to hold. And they're just looking at the picture and listening to you as the teacher read the story. I didn't like that. Uh, the reason why I didn't like that is because I like reading with my son. We sit together with like a book kind of situation. And so I wanted him to see me in the act of reading um, and to be able to see the pictures too. And when I say like, the teacher read it wasn't like they had a book like the whole book it was a teacher manual so it'd be like a little tiny thumbnail and then a bigger piece of writing to the side to let you know what picture to hold up while you were reading i wanted it integrated together and so i spent a ton of time combining the two um that and i know that that's probably crazy of me but i also wanted to be able to show my kiddo the the whole the both of them together the words plus the picture so that's what I did for me that might be a lot it is what it is but we are using those domains so each day um, of the week we read the next story the next chapter in whatever domain that we are in and then in addition to that they have um, suggested in those domains picture books that they think would go along with it. So like for the five senses, there's been tons of great uh, children's books that they have suggested, some for just one cent, uh, you know, like sight or smell or whatever it is. Some of them talk about all five as a whole. And then others are things that are kind of like tangentially, tangentially. Why can't I say that word today, guys? But you know what I'm saying? Like it's like <laughs> related. Um, like on a tangent kind of, but like there. Uh, so for example, we, we were reading about hearing and then they suggested a book about a young student who is deaf and how he can go to a concert and feel the vibrations of the music. So, you know, and, and we, see, we did sight and they also suggested a book about seeing eye dogs. So it's like pulling in multiple different books that all kind of have to do with that topic. Really great, we love it. So as also part of our reading instruction, we are reading from these domains and we are reading a couple of books also each day that has been suggested either from core knowledge to go with the domains or even I've also been pulling in other great literature that has been suggested in other curriculums as well and if you're ever interested to see what our library halls are each week uh, I post many videos on that and I will link my most recent one down below as well for reading we're using our computer game we're reading um, the different texts and then we are also using core knowledge for handwriting as well we are still using also handwriting without tears um, that has come up that comes up maybe once or twice a week, but it's in our loops. And so we don't get to it as often as I would hope, but we got so many other extra goodies that, um, you know, those pieces that aren't like our core subjects, we just don't get to as often. For science, we have been doing Blossom and Root level zero, which is all about outer space. And, um, I'm liking that we're starting to get more, I feel like into the space aspect of it. I guess <laughs> we spent a lot of time prepping to go into space, quote unquote, because you know, it's supposed to be fun. Like we're pretending we're astronauts and we're gonna blast off. And so we're about to get into the sun, but I feel like there was so much lead up to get to the sun that I'm like, ready for it like I don't know I I'm like itching at the bit to get into it but also I know that we're taking our time with it we're not spending as much time each day on it and so that's also kind of why it is taking us a long time to get into the nitty gritties of being in outer space but we've made our spaceship that got to happen that was really cool we have um 
Okay, we basically just made the spaceship. I I am a little disappointed in the lack of crafts, I feel like, and experiments in the kindergarten level. I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not we will continue with Blossom and Root next year for first grade. Um, I'm actually kind of leaning more toward doing core knowledge actually for science. I think also sometimes our science piece seems like we're not doing as much because we're doing a unit study as well. And our unit study um, happens to be on a science topic and we're doing so much with that unit study and really just loving every minute of it <laughs> that I feel like sometimes it's almost like, oh yeah, that's not the science that we're doing. We're doing that. So, which is silly because they're both science guys. They're both science. I'm just being crazy sauce, right? <laughs> but I, um, I think next year, my husband and I have been talking about it. We are going to, um, have whatever our unit study is. If it is a science-based unit study, then that will be our science for that time. We won't try to do an additional science topic on top of a unit study that is science-focused. So, but again, we started super early, so I'm not worried about us getting everything done. It's just that, you know, it's just something to consider is what it is. Uh, with our unit study, since I started talking about it, I'm gonna tell you about it. Uh, we've been doing great. We have been doing really great. Um, we are using the Mini Beast unit from the Waldoc Way. I will link that down below as well. We have been doing letter crafts with bugs, which is really fun. We have done um, lots of different activities. We've painted and, you know, I feel like, I feel like we've done so much with this that there's no way I could go back to a a time where we didn't do a unit study. It's the best way to start our morning. He eats breakfast and I get into our texts. We have these great resources and then he gets into his activities for him to keep his hands busy while I'm still reading from right now. Our novel is The Cricket in Times Square and we're really enjoying that. I will say that we started to read the book Masterpiece and oh, we maybe got a third of the way through, almost maybe even half the way through. And we just couldn't, we just couldn't become invested in it. And we tried, we, we really tried and it just didn't work out. So I ended up returning that to the library because I knew he wasn't enjoying it. And I didn't blame him. I did read the novel Battle Bugs Chameleon Attack, which I now found out is like, the, maybe the fourth book in a series. So I'm actually gonna start looking for more of these battle bug books. They were really short early chapter book readers, but because they were short, they kept his attention. Um, and the bugs were like, also, I, I think this is also part of it, maybe I'm wrong, but the bug in it, the kid is the same size. And something about having a bug be the same size as you and, and that being like a main character, I think it was helpful because he really liked James and the Giant Peach too. And the whole idea that they were giant bugs, I think also was really cool to him. That said, the cricket in Times Square is not the size of a person. So we'll see, but we are a couple chapters into that and so far he's liking it. So I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but we are moving through that and our plan is as of right now, to just continue going through that unit study um, for the rest of the year. I know that a lot of people will do unit studies maybe for like one month or they'll do a unit study um, over maybe a couple weeks or, you know, but they're, they usually a unit study isn't a year long unit study. Um, but like I said, we're taking our time with our kindergartner. We're really enjoying it. He's in no rush to end it. I think if he was showing some extreme fatigue, that'd be a different story, but we're not quite there yet. Kind of hitting back into our core subjects, we are using core knowledge for history and geography. We just finished up unit two on Native Americans. And I say just finished up, we have a couple of last minute end of unit activities that we're still doing. We've been making postcards from each of the three Native American um, I would say tribes, but it's not, 
they don't really go over tribes so much as it's like um, areas, like geographically. We did the Eastern Woodlands, the Southwest, and the Pacific Northwest. So we're finishing up those postcards. And then I have a couple of questions. I have actually 10 multiple choice questions to ask to kind of see like, what did he retain from that? And then we are gonna move into unit three, which is all about how people came to America who were not um, Native Americans. So that's really exciting. So I have really enjoyed core knowledge so far, but that would make us halfway through that as well because there are only four units. The first was on continents and we had Native Americans and now we're gonna get into the third unit out of four and I'm excited about that. I have already started reserving books from the library uh, to go with that unit. As far as our loops go, we have been um, kind of working our way through things <laughs> little by little. So um, just to kind of give you an idea of a rundown of our day. We start our morning with our bug basket where um, I slowly like overlap breakfast, moves then into the bug basket. We do that um, to read roughly like a chapter of our novel, a picture book, and maybe uh, several pages from an informational text. Um, like a DK super bug book or something of that nature. And he is completing roughly two-ish crafts. So what I mean by that is his letter craft uh, requires him to cut out the bug, glue it down and color it. So he would do one of those three things. So on day one, he cuts it out and then we collect all the pieces and then he moves on to the next thing, which might be a sticker book. It might be watercoloring the bug that we are working on at that time, whatever it might be. So that roughly takes us, I would say about an hour, sometimes a little bit more. Um, but unless he is like, yes, let's keep going. That's right ish where we stop. Uh, I do try to see if he wants to play games. We've got lots of bug games to go with it. Um, and it's like a 50, 50 shot there. Sometimes he's like, yes, let's play a bug game. And then other times he's like, nah, I'm ready to go play somewhere else. So then we take a break. When we come back together, we do our Matthew C. And we had been doing after that, um, some of our um, phonics stuff, but you know, that has been kind of push so we do our Matthew C and then I put him on his computer game for reading the teacher monster to read after that if he has done it for the timer amount I ask him if he wants to keep playing that or if he wants to play something else um, but at that point he has earned TV time so I give him a timer for that once that is done either then we have to turn the TV off and stretch our legs to play, or then he is ready to get into uh, history and science. Um, hopefully around that time, you know, we are able to have lunch right after. Sometimes we have to have lunch first. And sometimes it works out where for history and science that day, it's both reading. And so then it gets kind of lumped into the next piece. So then after lunch, that's around the time where I end up putting the baby down for a nap. And then after she's down, then uh, we cuddle up together on the couch and we do our reading for that day. So it's going to be the next chapter of the domain from Core Knowledge. It's going to be um, two to three picture books that have been suggested from various places. And then if there is reading for science and history, that as well. Um, sometimes, you know, if it's a ton of reading, I might break it up a little bit, um, you know, play in the middle, or I might get a snack that he can munch on while we are doing the reading, but we generally do that curled up on the couch together while the baby is down for her nap. Then he has his biggest play break, come back together, and hopefully at that point we can get to our loops. And then depending on how we are feeling at that point in the day, because we have done things in such chunks, having big amounts of time uh, that we are playing and doing other things and getting these mental breaks. 
we only usually have about an hour before he has grandma time with my mother-in-law. Um, so at that point, it's just a matter of how he's feeling to determine what we're gonna get done in our loops. So if he's feeling great, then we might get all three of them done. If he's feeling great, he might get on one and he might get on a roll and be like, no, I wanna keep doing this one. In which case I'm like, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, right? Like, if you wanna keep doing handwriting, we'll just keep doing handwriting. Or, oh, you're really into coding today? Cool, let's look at, you know, this Evan Moore book on coding and do some sequence, which is the other thing, is our loops are almost all activity books, which he loves. So if he's not feeling it and it's something that he likes, then, you know, I'm like, I, I'm not worried about us not getting to it because he enjoys it. So I know we are going to get to it eventually. Now that is for a typical day. I know that before our schedule kind of uh, shifted into having something called a fun Friday where that was uh, what I described to you would be days um, Monday through Thursday and then on Friday after our bug basket we would just do things from the loops so that we could stay on top of that. Um, things have kind of shifted though. We have started doing these regular play dates with a friend of ours from our co-op and so Fridays now look like the other days where Wednesdays when our play date generally is is where we still do our bug basket in the morning um, but then after our friend leaves, if there's time before it's grandma time, then I'll ask about um, if he wants to do one of the activity books from the loops. Um, but generally, you know, it's an all day thing. Um, we are thinking about maybe in incorporating maybe some art or some um, like experiments like we got to make slime the other day uh, into our time with our co-op friend. And so uh, I'm, I'm, we're exploring options about what maybe we could do with the kiddos, especially when uh, the baby goes down for her nap and we kind of have to be a little bit more quiet. What are some things that we could do to keep the kiddos interested? And so we are brainstorming at this point <laughs> about, do we want to introduce a whole nother curriculum? I think that's my problem is I constantly want to add more. I don't need to add any more. I always want to, it's my thing. Oh, and I also, after the bug basket on those mornings, uh, we still ask him to do a couple, I say a couple minutes, it's more like 15, 20 minutes on his game, Teach Your Monster to Read. And you know, it's, it's no hardship. Also, I forgot to mention, we have downloaded on his tablet, the Khan Academy for Kids. That is totally free and so far we are loving it. It is such a nice holistic um, app. Shout out to another co-op family friend who suggested it for us. Thank you so much. <laughs> but for that, it's like if we give him the option instead of watching having TV time, if you'd rather have tablet time um, to do that, that's fine. And that's another thing that I can I offer sometimes on the days with our play date. Um, if he's done the bug basket, if he's done the computer game for Teacher Monster to read, I might say, hey, do you want to play Khan Academy for a little bit on your tablet until our friends get here or eat after our friends leave and it's um, not quite time to go down to grandma's, then like, oh, do you want to, do you want to do your tablet while you wait is another option. So just having that is, is great. And I'm, happy that we're going to have that for if we have any long car rides or anything. Um, something fun and educational that he can do on the tablet would be awesome. Other than that, I think the other thing is, is my husband has been really um, pushing to help me try to get this office into a better shape for homeschool. Uh, the more we do with our homeschool, uh, the more fulfilled that we are, but also just the more it starts to take over my kitchen. It is, I, I totally understand now the struggle. I saw so many videos when I first started from people talking about how they organize things in a small space. And I just was like, oh, well, there's not that much to it. I was so wrong. There's so much and it adds and adds and adds. So 
we are slowly getting this room put together so that we can make it into a homeschool room. Um, my husband has bought me a new desk that I'm hoping can kind of double as like a table situation to work at things, work on things with together. Um, there's lots going on and I am, I'm thrilled with, uh, with the ideas that we have and where we want to be. I just, um, I just need to really get that going, right? I, can you hear that car in the background? Yeeks. So that is everything I think that there is to know for July. I know upcoming, we are going to start doing more things with our co-op very soon. Um, we really have been enjoying our co-op friends and the co-op meetups that we've been to so far. And so that's been really great. So, so many amazing things. Uh, if you have questions about anything that I talked about, please put them into the comments. I would be happy to answer them for you. If you have any suggestions for any videos you would like me to make, if there's any curriculum you'd like me to talk about, if there is um, anything that I've mentioned here or in another video that you would like me to expand on, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments down below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos from me, subscribe. Have a great day. Bye-bye.